trailers for sale. Thank you. 
You know, it just goes to show that sometimes even when you plan something out for about two weeks, that it can turn into a soup sandwich in a matter of no time. Now the video is not even close to being over yet. I just wanted to take a moment and explain what's going on. You know, it always seems like such a simple process, at least in theory, to take a vehicle that's not running and load it onto a trailer with either a come along or a winch, just simply load it up, strap it down and drive home. But in my experience, it tends to never work out that way. Seems like there's always some kind of hidden problem that I overlook or something comes up and I end up driving home with an empty trailer, which is exactly what happens in the first part of this video. I noticed the drive shaft on the front of the truck was bent, but I paid no attention that the locking hubs were stuck in four wheel drive. So I've got the trailer backed up to the front of the truck. I've got my come along hooked to the truck and I can move it forward about a foot and then the drive shaft rotates enough to get into a bind and then the truck won't go anywhere. That's where I'm at. I didn't really want to get my brown roll back out of hibernation. There's a few problems that I need to fix on it. A few small problems and one major problem being that the rear end needs replaced. I don't want to go into too much and talk through the part of the video. I don't want people to lose interest. We might go over it later in the video, but basically the truck was used and abused by a tractor shop. The rear end needs replaced. It's got a lot of slop in it. You can actually park the truck on flat ground, put the transmission in neutral, and almost do a complete rotation with the drive shaft. Now, it's not stuck in between high and low. It's just the fact that the ring gear in the back, I guess, has teeth missing or it's chewed up. It's really weird that it doesn't make any kind of noise. There's no metallic shaving in the fluid that comes out of it, so I'm kind of at a loss there. I think I've got one to swap in the truck. But anyways, I had to make the trip back with my red Dodge and trailer, get the roll back, and proceed to drive 35 miles to this place again to pick up the truck, and I could only do about 35 miles an hour. So <laughs> there's no footage of me driving because you don't want to see people passing me and giving me the one finger salute. But anyways, it's time to get the brown roll back out of hibernation and go back and pick this truck up.
I think this is kind of off to a bad start already because when I looked at the truck to begin with, I realized that every one of the spark plugs are out of this cylinder head. And I just realized today there's an old can of ZEP 45 spray lubricant that I think somebody was trying to do the same thing that I'm going to try to accomplish this morning. The way things look, I'm beginning to be deeply concerned. I'm going to try to spray some lubricant on the top of these pistons. I don't believe the engine is stuck. I honestly haven't even tried yet. We'll try that in a moment. I just want to make sure there's some lubricant on top so I'm not scratching anything. What I'm going to use is Croil. Now, I'm not endorsed by them in any way. I mean, it would be nice, wink, wink. But this stuff is fairly expensive, but it works better than a lot of the other stuff that's on the market. I'm going to go ahead and spray down on the top of these pistons, let that sit for a little bit, and then we'll go ahead in the meantime and remove that drive shaft. Another bad sign, at least in my opinion, is this dust cover is off the bottom of the flywheel housing. So it kind of makes me wonder if somebody tried getting in here with a pry bar to get this engine unstuck. But the next thing I have to deal with is this front drive shaft. Now, over the years of this truck being passed through quite a few different hands and being moved around with various pieces of machinery, you can see this drive shaft is bent almost right in the center. It has almost a 22 degree bend in it. I mean, you can see this relief in the cross member is where the drive shaft is supposed to be and it's pushed all, all the way over to the side. I can't really blame that on the guy that I bought it from because whenever I originally looked at this truck before he even moved it, the front drive shaft was already mangled. You can also see another spot further back where somebody's pushed it with something. But I need to get this out of here so I can have a drive shaft shop build me a new one. At least they'll have all the measurements that I need. Something else neat to show you is the transmission has this short drive shaft in between the transfer case. If you're not familiar with that, it's called a divorce transfer case. It will make it a lot easier if I do decide to swap a different engine into this truck down the line. I can either cut this drive shaft down and shorten it or lengthen it depending on what type of engine and transmission I put in front. But let me go ahead and get the tools out and I'll get this drive shaft taken out of here. I'm sure it was a little difficult to tell when this was still bolted underneath the truck, but now that it's off, you can see just how bad this poor front drive shaft is. It has definitely seen better days. But there's a local drive shaft shop that's close to me that can make one for this truck. It doesn't have to handle a lot of horsepower or torque because that engine did not put out a lot from the factory. So I can just go back to the factory specs of this one and should be good. Oh, that engine is not budging. Well, let's see if I can soak these cylinders down with something else. We'll come back here in a few weeks or so. See if it made any kind of a difference on this old engine. It took me a minute to find the right size funnel that'll go into these spark plug holes. 
But I'm going to take some of this Marvel Mystery Oil and try to pour it in each one of these cylinders and let them soak. I'm really trying to get this engine unstuck because I don't really want to swap the engine in this truck. It looks really rough, but the axles seem to be in good shape. They don't look like they're leaking. Of course, it could be the fact that there's no fluid in them. But the frame on this old truck is nice and straight. The wiring doesn't even look half bad either. I would like to get it running. Honestly, just throw historic plates on it, maybe drive it to car shows that are local to me. It's a pretty rough old truck, don't get me wrong. It needs some tires, needs the lights and stuff fixed on it. But it's a really good base to try to build something cool off of. So I'm going to try to get this engine unstuck with the Marvel. If that doesn't work, we'll have to go to more extreme measures. I don't mean to leave you in suspense, but you made it to the end of the video, so you know what that means. No more for today! Alright, enough with the jokes, need to be serious for once. But I need to let the engine soak, and hopefully the lubricant will help get the engine unstuck. If that doesn't work, it looks like I'm going to have to either pull the cylinder head, or possibly even the oil pan off of this engine. I really know nothing about it. For all I know, it could have a broken rod inside of there, which is causing it not to turn over. But that'll be in the next video in the series on this truck. I really wanted to say thank you to everybody that takes the time out of their day to watch my videos, especially all the way through. It actually helps me out a lot more on YouTube than you would ever imagine, so thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment or a question down below. Consider subscribing if this is the kind of content that you're into. And as always, just a friendly reminder that it doesn't matter if you're working on your truck in a garage or in your driveway. What matters is that you go out there, you do the job yourself, and you learn more about your project, whatever that project may be. Now that this video's over, how about you go outside and work on something? My name is Zane, and I'll catch you next time.